Now let me tell you, in the past few weeks I have been absolutely absorbed in why the fuck Overwatch always opens as windowed whenever I boot it up. I have been playing Overwatch non-stop for the past few weeks and it is one of the most enjoyable games I have played recently. It has an immense amount of character and variability and team comps and strategies that you can try out, unless you play as this guy. So I decided to add the already watered down cesspool that is the internet with my opinion on what the top 10 best heroes in Overwatch are. Remember this is just my opinion on the subject matter and yours may vary. This isn't necessarily a list of the best Overwatch heroes competitively is just a list of the best heroes for me. So here's my opinion on things. Feel free to post yours in the comments. The personality of the heroes in Overwatch is a major draw of the game, and I just want to know what the hell Blizzard is trying to say by giving the only Egyptian a rocket launcher. Justice reigns from above. As hilariously ironic as it is to give the only rocket launcher in the game to the character who comes from the place that constantly has planes shot down, Farah also has some very strong capabilities in her kit. She is one of the only characters in the game who has strong control over the skies of Overwatch and can blast up to them in a moment's notice with her left ship, and then can use her pack to hover and gain more control. With this, she can drop some justice on enemies from above with her rockets, or knock them around with her concussive blast. She can also ult to clear an objective easily, unless she gets taken out of the air immediately. Really far is unique in the sense that she has the most vertical combat in the game, and for that, she grabs a spot in this list. I'm ready to unleash a blizzard! Alright, to be honest, May is a load of ass. May is the bane of the existence of anyone who isn't playing May. Because all she has to do is hold left click for a while, walk away, go and watch all of Love Actually, come back as you're about to be unfrozen, fucking jump off the top of High Rise, and then right click and you're gone. May is the biggest pain in the ass, but she is so much fun to play. You can pop walls on people, drop from the sky like a damn Malaysian flight, and freeze anybody on a single point by hitting the Q button, making her all around very helpful. In the vein of healers, you have quite an interesting array of personalities to choose from, to say the least. You have Robo Gandhi, you have Swiss Res Fairy, you have the girl who isn't even a healer but is still in the support category for some reason, and then you have Brazilian Dubstep Guy. The Brazilian Dubstep Guy just so happens to be number 8 on our list. A list break it down! Lucio is one of the most unsung OP heroes I have ever seen in the game. Clearly when you talk about someone who is overpowered in Overwatch, it's gonna be about high noon. But no one mentions Lucio until you really get into it. Lucio isn't a direct healer like Mercy. He projects an aura around him that heals or gives increased movement speed based on his stance. But he can also wall ride, and if it doesn't get him on this list then what else will? Also along with the ability to wall ride, he can also send people flying with his right click, which can either be really pointless or just really funny. Now in terms of the cultural aspect, Lucio represents Brazil really well. But to be honest, at this point I'm just talking out of my ass because I've never been to Brazil. Nor do I want to. Seems to have a lot of Zika. Lucio probably has Zika. Oh shit. Oh, let's break it! Damn! Amongst the Asian members of the roster, there are only a few characters that I consider really interesting. Symmetra could make it onto this list, but that bitch got a parakeet nose. So right now, I'm gonna talk about Zenyatta. Pass into the iris. Zenyatta was a famous racehorse born in shit. Zenyatta is one of the three healers in Overwatch as of this video's release. He has an interesting concept revolving around these orbs that he can place on teammates or enemies. Harmony orbs will heal teammates passively, and Discord orbs will increase the damage put onto enemies. He also has an ass load of damage by firing Bakugan at the enemy players, which can either be fired with a single left click or charged with a right click to fire five at once. Zenyatta is one damn good horse. Experience Tranquility Double. The Shadow of Doubt. What? Ah, shit. <laughs> 
can see I'm gonna level with you here. McCree is good. Like, really damn good. But you don't feel good playing him. It would be like Kimbo Slice going up to a five-year-old. Well, fuck, he's dead. It would be like Conor McGregor going up to a five-year-old and punching them in the mouth. Like, yeah, you did it. But was it satisfying? I don't know, probably. My point here is that you've got one function as McCree. First, walk into the enemy. Next, hit the E key. Did you stun him? Cool. Now right click. Did they die? Unless your mouse was plugged into foam peanuts, then the answer should be yes. Around the time that I'm working on this video, there are talks of McCree nerfs flying around, so this may not hold true for the future. But for now, McCree is the indisputable god killer in this game. So of course he's gotta be on this list, because he is really good if you play him on a level of slight sentience. But really, you can only get so much satisfaction out of it. It's hand. Triple Q. Black sitting ducks. Heroes never die. Mercy on call. Mercy is one of the most beloved parts of Overwatch because she is one of the most valuable assets on a team. She can heal, buff damage, revive anyone, and do some nice damage with her blaster. And then she gets all the sweet updings at the end of the game. Mercy is such a beautiful thing to have on a team because that means you'll have constant healing and that the role of healer has already been pushed onto some other sorry loser and you can play someone way more fun, just like... Heroes never die. Hey guys, did you know Naruto is in this game? Fucking kill me. Genji is with you. Genji being one of the Shimada brothers comes well equipped with a sword and shurikens that he can throw in a number of ways. He can also pull some bullshit on Bastions that makes everything about that hero just a little more alright. He can also cover a large amount of ground with his left shift, causing him to dash and slice through the air and whatever might be in his path. He can also climb walls and double jump, making him one of the most annoying heroes to fight one on one. By using his ult, he takes out a powerful sword, streams some Israeli, and starts cutting down all the enemies he can, or just dies immediately. He's also one of the more diverse assault heroes in the terms of weaponry, but I guess that doesn't matter when- We're all soldiers now. You know there are some things in nature that we can't really explain, like where it all came from, how it will all end, or what the fuck caused this thing to exist? You little piggy. Like seriously, what the shit is this? You got a giant pig thing with the most organic health in the game that can throw hooks through walls. It's like McDonald's mobilized their regulars to act as soldiers for Overwatch. And what even are this guy's voice lines? I'm a one man apocalypse. Whoa, man, where's your fucking Lincoln Park playing, your Christian Edgelord necklace? But on the real, Roadhog is just a huge amount of fun to play. His hook and constant ability to heal makes him pretty unstoppable, and I always have a fun time bullying people with him. However, there is one more tank that I enjoy just a little more than Roadhog. Ahem. <laughs> Your elders. Reinhardt is one of my favorite characters in this game because he is probably the best mix of fun and useful that there is. His greatest ability is to literally sit on a point with his shield up and just wait. If they try to touch you, then you can always resort to the big ass amber that he carries around. He can also just amalgamate fire out of the air and send it hurling at snipers, so that's pretty cool too. However, if there is ever a lull in the moment, then there is always a time to charge into battle. No matter how useless Reinhardt's charge might be, it is infinitely satisfying to take some squishy into a wall and pancake the hell out of them. Reinhardt's ult also makes for a crazy powerful counter to anybody on an objective, and sets up for a nice little hammer spree, especially for a guy who probably has erectile dysfunction. Reinhardt is best used as an objective holder, but he can also be used for some stupid as hell but fun plays, making him one of the best heroes in the game for me. In this number one spot, I present to you the reason that I just keep coming back to this game. This is one facet of the game that never disappoints and will always hold true as being the paramount seller amongst others in this series. The best hero in Overwatch is Blizzard's butt guy. If there has ever been a hero of the people championing gaming into a new era, it is this man. But really, number one is Hanzo. 
Snipers have always been my favorite role in games and allow them. So I was admittedly a bit disappointed that this game had only two snipers, but when I was playing Hanzo, I realized that I didn't really need any more because he's such a fun, admittedly screwy, and strong fighter. As one of the badass Shimada bros, he is equipped with a bow that can produce sonar and bouncing shrapnel that can be one of the most infuriating things for the enemy team. He also apparently has the ability of increasing the size of your hitbox because this is a thing. And to top it off, his ultimate has the capability to clear most points if used well, or to just kind of get reflected back at him. That, that too. Archery is a cool sport, unless you're retarded, and for that reason, Hanzo is the best hero in Overwatch for me. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If this is your first time on my channel, then feel free to check out other things such as my Smite content, and Smite content. My social media links are on the screen and in the description, so feel free to visit those. And I'm nearing 10,000 sub marks, so it would be cool if you guys could help me reach that. I know this is all kind of cringy, but when the government will let you have Xanax or guns, what else are you supposed to do? See you guys next time, and thanks for watching.